Hi everyone, thank you for watching. Today I'm going to be reading chapter 2 of my book, The Bridge That Never Crumbles. Chapter 2, Excitement and Loss. Fast forward four years to 2014, and my husband Michael and I decided we were ready to have another baby. For the past year, I had been suffering with endometriosis and fibroids on my uterus. I had surgery that year to remove the endometriosis. After that surgery, it only took a couple months for us to get pregnant. At that time, I took it for granted because we also got pregnant very quickly with our daughter. At the time, I did not understand that getting pregnant is a miracle, but also staying pregnant until the baby is full term is also a miracle. Around that time, our entire family took a Christmas trip to Branson, Missouri. I was already showing a baby bump, and Michael and I decided to announce on that trip that I was pregnant. We were eating at a restaurant, and I stood up, took off my coat, and showed everyone my belly. My mom was so excited that she was going to be Nana for the fourth time, she told everybody in the restaurant about it. My sister had a son and daughter at the time, and just recently added a second son. The rest of the trip was perfect. I was so excited to have a life growing inside of me. Not long after our trip, I had a prenatal checkup. We could not wait to hear the baby's heartbeat. During the ultrasound, it seemed like she moved the wand over my belly forever. Finally, she said she couldn't find a heartbeat. My heart broke. Michael told me not to worry, and we were probably just earlier than what we thought, which is the doctor said was a possibility. I went to the doctor's office every two days following that visit to check my hormone levels to see if they were increasing, which would indicate a normal pregnancy. It was so hard not to worry, I fully admit that I did. I just kept praying for peace and that the baby would be okay. A few days later, I started bleeding. I knew in my heart that we had lost the baby. I went to the doctor the next day and he confirmed the tragic news. The baby had passed away, but my body wasn't allowing him or her to come out. So they scheduled a DNC for the following morning. I went to sleep in the operating room and woke up completely shattered. Sadness and grief overtook me. In addition to that, I was having horrible pain in the days following the DNC. I had developed an infection and the recovery was hard. My family, friends, and coworkers were amazing during that time. They visited us, brought us meals, and just loved on us. One friend brought me to the devotional, Grieving the Child I Never Knew. That book touched my heart so much and helped me process my feelings of loss. However, it was still hard to understand why this had happened, and I kept blaming myself. Maybe this was my punishment for all the previous sins in my life. But with that thought, God would remind me that He had already covered my sins. Praise Him. They were forgiven and gone. The lie that it was my fault was straight from Satan. We didn't know if the baby was a boy or a girl, but we named the baby Hope to help us grieve. Later that year, I had another surgery to remove more endometriosis. We had already been trying to conceive, but couldn't. After the surgery, my doctor told me that my uterus was not healthy enough to get pregnant again. My doctor is a man of faith, so he didn't tell me it was impossible to get pregnant, but between the unhealthy uterus and the fibroids, it would pretty much be impossible. Only a few months passed before I started having the horrible pain again from the endometriosis. We talked about the option of having a hysterectomy, but I just felt the Lord telling me to wait. Thank you for watching today. Please stay tuned for chapter three coming soon.